executed in 2019 for the murders of six men. This is the last meal of Gary Ray Bose, also known as the I-95 killer. Bose had a difficult childhood. His father died right before he was born. His mother went from several abusive relationships until she got remarried. Gary's stepfather abused him, his older brother, and his mother. At 13 years old, Gary reached his breaking point and fought back against his stepfather by hitting him with a brick several times. His mother did not leave the abusive marriage, which forced Gary to run away from home. The next few years would not treat him any better. After being released from prison for beating and sexually assaulting his girlfriend at the time and then for unarmed robbery, Gary moved to Daytona Beach, Florida. After a few months, he moved in with his new girlfriend, who eventually got pregnant. She ended up getting an abortion and leaving him after finding out he was a sex worker. This led him deeper into drugs and alcohol, making it difficult for him to afford a place to live. Gary met his first victim, John Roberts, who let Gary stay at his place in exchange for sexual favors. According to Gary, John started to develop feelings for Gary and wanted more. John and Gary got into an argument which led to Gary strangling John to death. He stole John's car and ended up in Washington, D.C., where he met his second victim, David Jarman. The two of them met at a restaurant and made their way back to David's place, where Gary killed him. As he did with his previous victim, Gary stole David's car and headed down the I-95 to Savannah, Georgia. At a restaurant in Savannah, Gary was asked to take Milton Bradley, who would be his third victim, home. During the car ride, Milton started having a panic attack, which frustrated Gary. Gary pulled over onto a golf course, got out of the car, and murdered Milton. Knowing he had to get out of town quickly, Gary made his way to Atlanta, Georgia. There, Gary met his fourth victim, Alverson Carter Jr. According to Gary, he killed Alverson because he got aggressive and wanted more than just oral sex. This led to Gary stabbing Alverson several times. Gary continued traveling and made his way to Northern Florida. There he met his fifth victim, Albert Morris, who was the first person that offered Gary a place to stay but did not want sex in return. Instead, he wanted Gary to help him with some construction work around the house. Albert and Gary got into a fight over Gary not doing his share of the work that they agreed on. Once again, according to Gary, he said Albert grabbed a fork and threatened him, leading Gary to grab a gun and shooting Albert several times. At Albert's place, Gary found a wallet belonging to someone named Timothy Ronald Whitfield, along with a bunch of Timothy's personal documents. Gary struck gold because he just found himself a new identity. Gary made his way down to Jacksonville, Florida, where he decided to lay low with his new identity as Timothy. At this time, police were able to tie a few of these murders to the I-95 killer because all these victims had things shoved down their throat, which was Gary's M.O. Gary finally came out of hiding and found his last victim, Walter J. Hinton. At the crime scene, detectives found a red rag stuffed down Walter's throat, which connected this to the I-95 killer. At the crime scene, police found pay stubs belonging to Timothy Whitfield. This led to the arrest of Gary for the murder of Walter, where he also confessed to the other five murders. On August 22, 2019, Gary Ray Bowes had his last meal, three cheeseburgers, fries, and bacon. Thank you.